Hey, Ryan, we're at Premier Seal Coating. So, tricks of the trade. You're going to see one right here. Behind me is a MA-10. We all know what that is, right? That is the workhorse of the crack filling when it comes to your company. A lot of people are new. They're getting into the industry. They're getting into the business. Maybe they are using cold pour or even a trowel type of uh, crack filling. But if you really want to make some money, this is where it's at. I'm going to tell you why. This little machine right here is going to run you about 850 bucks. 950 if you don't have a good relationship with your company that you, or your vendor. If you've got a good relationship with your vendor, you're looking at about 850 bucks from Sealmaster. Now, the Sealmaster guys are probably shut the fuck up. This, that's 950 bucks. We'll just say 950. I gotta stop mentioning the amounts because whatever you can get yourself into this machine for, you're gonna save yourself a ton of time and you're gonna save yourself a ton of money. And this is why. This little 10 gallon beast is a basically, I'll, I'm gonna show you what it is. This little machine right here, for a thousand bucks, gives you the same result as that machine for fifty thousand bucks. Okay? So basically, when we talk crack filling, we're talking heating up rubber, putting it down on the ground, and doing it as quickly as possible, making as much money as possible. And this little beast right here, she can do the same thing. That's right. That that big big bastard outside, she, that may be 230 gallons, but this this bad boy right here, bad girl, she's 10 gallons. And 10 gallons, 10 gallons will do a lot of freaking crack. Trust me. All right, we're talking like Detroit in the 80s type of crack. So. What is this machine? Basically, it's a kettle. Okay? It's a kettle. It takes about three of the 25-pound bricks. You have a torch. And you have a propane tank. It's pretty self-explanatory. But I'm going to explain it anyways. Because... People always ask. You say it's self-explanatory, then you didn't explain anything. So, I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it for you. Okay? So, what this, what this machine does is it heats up rubber and it puts it down in the cracks. Probably one of the most effective tools that have been developed for this industry next to the sprayable seal rig okay so what it does is we have this cup right here this is this little square your material is heated up inside of this it comes down through this tube you open this handle and it pours out it fills up this reservoir okay and that reservoir is what fills the crack. Now, depending on how big or how small, how deep or how wide the cracks are, will depend on how far um, the rubber is going to go. But at the end of the day, if you have used pour pots, or if you have um, a, a, a truck mounted melter and you're using these two or three gallon black pour pots that you're running around with this is this is it now these machines will help you um, make more money you know where we are you can get around a buck a foot for crack fill okay your cost is under that a lot under that so you want to pick one of these machines up you will have to make room for it it does take some time to cool down before you can you know 
put straps back on it or put it up next to your plastic blower. But at the end of the day, uh, for the short money, it, you, you absolutely need it. Now, for guys who already have this machine and know of it, you may know that these machines do not come with out there um, their own headaches and problems. And I am going to show you about that right now. So I'm going to move this down a little bit here. So, fire this up. All right, I got five now. Now. Sorry, we're back. Little drop with the camera here. So what I want to show you is, if you purchase this machine, you're only going to have one problem when it comes to maintenance on it. Okay, and that is if the material inside it gets too hot and it crystallizes, it's going to clog. Now, people tend to think that when the flow stops on the machine that you take your torch and you burn the shit out of it. Well, that's not the case. You're only going to make the problem even worse. The problem is, is that this little sleeve right here, all there is is a hole that is drilled from here to the inside, okay? Um, and I'm gonna take this apart in a second and show you, okay? But what happens is the material cooks and closes up inside this hole. And the hole that feeds it just becomes closed because there's too much crystallized material. So if you got a full hopper, well, you got a big problem on your hands. So I'm gonna show you an example how you would go about fixing that. Now if this machine was already heated up all the way this wouldn't be necessary I know this goes against what I just told you about burning off the latch but I'm doing this because it, it's not warmed up yet and I, I don't want to run the temp machine up to temperature just to show you an example of this so I'm just heating this up so I can take it apart heated up to the desired temperature this is how this machine operates when this is full you pull back on your handle here and this opens up and aligns one hole with the other hole and it allows the material to flow out of this and down into here okay but what happens is this clogs up and, and, and nothing comes out and people think well maybe it's in here and it's not melted so they actually take the 
torch and try to burn it, which makes it even worse. But what you do, mine is bent, I bent this in a particular way for this, for this very reason, okay? But normally what you do to fix it is you pull this back all the way. Now, if you keep pulling this back and you grab this part, you don't want to get too close to down here because that's going to be hot. But if you get this to turn around like that, this piece slides right out, okay? And you'll notice, hold on, I gotta grab a pair of pliers. Okay? And you'll notice that there's a hole in there, okay? And that hole lines up with the hole that is the same size right here, okay? So when you pull this lever, this thing flips around and lines the holes up so that the material can come out. Well, what happens when it's like this and it gets clogged up, now again, when this thing is piping 400 degrees hot, you really got to have your shit together or you're going to have a hell of a mess on your hands. But a lot of times you can just pull this back like so. Okay. And that's back to where it needs to be. Okay. Anybody that's been working, okay, you may pull this back a little too far. And you don't want it to come out. If there's 10 gallons of material in this box, there's going to be a ton of head pressure on that. Okay? So when it flips like that, it's going to want to fly out. So I've actually been able to get it out to like here and just hold it against the head pressure. And I take my stick, or I usually I use a thing on the bucket. I rip a metal thing off the bucket, and I just a few taps on the hole will break up whatever's in there. It comes out quick, and you just gotta. I kick it like that, boom, flip it over. So that's my trick of the trade when it comes to this machine, because there's really nothing else that can go wrong with it. You know, um, if it's going to be anything, it's going to be a clog, and it's going to be in that gap right there. So again, what I do is I pull this back. This is what you would run if you were just using it. You pull it back to operate it like so, okay? But, oh, now something's clogged. What do I do? Oh, no, I'm in there. I, I got the lid open. I'm jamming it with a stick. I can't find why it's clogged. I can't find why it's clogged. I take this. I flip this over. I back this out a little bit. I start plucking my hole with... Uh, um, I start plucking my hole with my bucket lid thing and again you don't ever want to pull this out unless you absolutely have to if you can't get it to loosen up or to start flowing when it's like this then you really want to think about your next step okay because you can take your bucket lid thing and bend it in a way that you can stick it in there and go up in that hole and just push away whatever's or break up whatever's in there okay I've had times where I've had to take this completely out, right? And then take this, jam it in there. It co starts coming out like a, fu like a fire hydrant. And I go right back, I gotta jam this thing back in there, like that, to get it to stop. Now when we do that, we know it's gonna make a heck of a mess. So we'll pull it over onto the grass or onto an area where, the, where there's dirt because you can do that and let it fly. And a lot of times, uh, if you do it on the grass or on the dirt, once it's cooled down, you can just peel it right off. Yeah, you're gonna leave a bear mark if it's on the grass, um, but it's an easy cleanup once it's cooled down. So that's my trick for the MA-10. Um, I'm gonna tell you if you are looking to Yep, so 
Yep, so that is my trick for using the MA-10. Um, again, it's a great piece of equipment if you're trying to up your game. Um, you're trying to make a little bit more money, get things done a little bit quicker, have your stuff come out looking a lot nicer. Um, then yeah, that's definitely definitely a, a good a good investment. Um, this is Ryan from Premier, bringing you the tools of the trade and the tricks to use them.